welcome to the channel. Well, since purchasing the Vario Aero headset, I've been flying in VR a lot, trying to figure out ways to make things better. I'm going to share with you a project I did to produce a super mouse for use in VR, and I'd like your comments and suggestions how to make it better. So let's get to it. If you follow my channel, you may have seen a previous video I did concerning the five things I hate about VR simming and why I still love it. And in that video, I laid out some of the shortcomings uh, for using VR for flight training. I'm happy to say the first two things on the list, the resolution and the field of view, have been pretty much taken care of by the arrow. The field of view is not bigger, but it's sharp all the way to the edges, and it doesn't seem as confining. Unfortunately, the inputs and knobs are still the big problem. Until we have some reliable form of hand tracking, interacting with the sim means either juggling a VR controller or having to reach constantly for a mouse whose cursor can destroy the immersion of VR. With either method, knobs are especially problematic. Whether the wild wrist contortions required trying to uh, turn a knob using a VR controller or trying to hover over part of a dual concentric knob long enough to use the scroll wheel to make an adjustment to a knob there had to be a better way. Well, since Microsoft Flight Simulator VR did not support the use of hand controllers initially, I was forced to use a mouse, and I found I didn't mind it that much. At least I wasn't having to pick up and put down a controller with my throttle hand every time I needed to make an input. So I got used to that, but I also found it was difficult having to find a smooth, flat place to put the mouse and trying to find it without being able to see it while under the VR headset. The solution I found for this was the Kensington Expert Mouse, which is actually a trackball. It's well constructed with a large heavy ball, it has a rotary scroll wheel, and four programmable buttons, and it's wireless so no wires are required. I purchased an inexpensive metal kneeboard from Amazon and attached the trackball using double-sided Velcro tape so they could be removed. Place this on my knee nearest the throttle so that it's readily available to my hand to make inputs. I never have to wonder about where it is because it's right there on my knee and it doesn't require any desk space. The only downside was that when making scroll wheel inputs to dials and knobs in the cockpit sometimes I would touch the ball and move it off the target and have to start again. The solution I came up with was a 3D printed cradle to hold the trackball with 12 programmable buttons that could be used and a multi-purpose dual encoder knob that can be selected by using the buttons to make inputs to the simulator. When the trackball is installed and velcroed to the kneeboard it holds the cradle in place and keeps it in a secure location where it's easy to find when you're unable to see it under the head mounted device. This mouse button box is powered by an Arduino Nano and programmed using Air Manager which offers excellent Arduino support. This offers ultimate flexibility. Each of the 12 buttons can be assigned to a single or multiple tasks in the simulator or to direct the encoder knob inputs to a specific knob in the simulator. All mouse functions are unimpeded by the use of the cradle. Heading hold. Altitude hold. An RL confirmation confirms the button hit. Airspeed hold. Vertical speed hold. Autopilot toggle. Flight director toggle. The four buttons across the top are examples of buttons used to assign function of the knob. Heading. Altitude. Airspeed. Vertical speed. Buttons can also be assigned to toggle between more than one knob function. Com 1. Com 2. Nav 1. Nav 2. Each of the encoder knobs and the push button function can be assigned separately if desired. Let's see this in operation on the new PMDG 737-700. Heading.
altitude. Airspeed. Vertical speed. Note the vertical speed's not displayed on the ground, but the scroll wheel is moving. Autopilot toggle. You can see Command A illuminating green. Autopilot toggle. Flight director toggle. Flight director toggle. Now the comm nav radios. Calm line. Whoops, need to uh, select radio one with the button. There we go. Swap comm one. Swap comm one. The encoder push button is assigned to swap the active and standby frequencies. Comm two. The dual encoders work just like the knobs in the aircraft. Swap COM2. Swap COM2. And we can operate the NAVs too. NAV1. COM1. COM2. NAV2. NAV1. Swap NAV1. NAV2. Swap NAV2. Swap NAV2. Just a quick aside as a uh, former airline pilot with a lot of time in the 737 and also uh, quite a uh, fan of the Zebo. I gotta tell you that I was very impressed in just my first day flying this this uh, PMDG. The flight model is uh, very acceptable. Not sure it's quite up to uh, Zebo standards yet, but it is uh, it's really good compared to uh, a P3D or uh, FSX. I have to tell you that in my uh, Vario Aero headset, the the textures are stunning beautiful job on the artwork and uh, the systems just from my initial experience uh, seem to be a little bit more complete and actually very realistic little things that uh, that I noticed uh, that I hadn't noticed in Zebo hadn't been implemented yet but uh, this is a very mature airplane system wise so uh, I'm, I'm excited to uh, get to know this airplane better and uh, especially to fly in the beautiful uh, scenery of, uh, of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I just hope they keep moving in a positive direction and constantly improving the product because uh, I'm starting to become a believer. I'm going to make the model for this little uh, uh, cradle available uh, on freesimstuff.com a website where we have some other Auto little things that we've toggle. made for simula Auto simulation, some uh, stuff for Auto honeycomb and so on. But uh, it's a, a project that's not difficult at all to make uh, and other people may want to implement something Flight besides Air toggle. Manager to run it, a uh, Moby toggle. Flight or something else, but Flight I find it works toggle. really well and I'm a fan of uh, Air Manager. Now Head what I want to show you here, I'm going to show you one of the advantages of uh, Air Manager. I'm going to center the heading here, although I do have the sync button set up. But I'm going to center that, and I'm going to show you how many turns. Watch how many turns it takes me to get it down to the bottom to 180 degrees. And this is a way, if you just put a, uh, a joystick control, you're going to have to make all those turns. Now, I have it set up so that the uh, one knob see how quick that came back the big knob is is accelerated and that's something you can do with air manager Altitude. Uh, so have the small knob uh, slow and the big knob fast although it will slow down if you slow the speed of turn there you can see the altitude change there's sync altitude, altitude. we're at 2700 feet at the field here at uh, Tucson heading heading sync 
Airspeed. No speed Vertical controls speed. on this airplane. As you can see, it's very flexible. For example, I could take the heading button and have it toggle heading and then course one. And we could set the course with the same knob. Very flexible. Let's do some calm here. It shows you the advantage of the dual encoder. And we'll uh, calm two. select COM1 and calm one. actually toggle it to COM1. And you can see the push button function will swap, swap them. Swap so you get the idea. What I'd be interested is in the comments if you would uh, tell me how you would assign these 12 buttons. If you had this and you could have swap them control a knob or multiple knobs or just a simulator function, how you would use these 12 knobs, uh, 12 buttons. I think the GPS button. Uh, selector for the 530. Uh, that's a dual encoder. That would be a logical one. Uh, but I'd be appreciated if you would uh, take the time, some Net of you who, who would be interested Net in one. something like this, to give me your best ideas of what you would think. I just kind of randomly picked things that I use commonly in the sim and Swap wanted to uh, uh, use them as an example. Net two. I hope this inter interests you. And uh, as I said, freesimstuff.com, you can. Uh, get the uh, model if you want to 3D print this. It's a pretty long print. It took me about uh, 10 hours, I think, to print the, the piece, but uh, I printed it, as you see, with support underneath. Uh, there, I, I, You may have a better way to print it. Before I go, one last thing I wanted to tell you about. It's a plug-in for X-Plane that was made by the guys at Sim Innovations. It's called Knob XP, and it's free. I'll link it above. You can see in this splash screen from that video, Knobster in the bottom right. That's the knob that's available from Sim Innovations for their panels. But it is also available for running VR in X-Plane. It allows that menu to be popped up. You can create functions. Uh, and it does similar to what this little project that I've shown you today does without any hardware. I'd love to see a similar freeware program or plug-in for a play simulator to allow use of this sort of hardware. Also, in the end, I don't think even with hand tracking that knobs are going to be easily manipulated with our hands. And I think it might be nice if you could reach up and touch a knob to select it or a set of knobs and then make the inputs using a, a mechanical knob that you could actually feel and make the inputs. So if you're interested, watch that video about the X-Plane plug-in. And if you or someone you know is interested and has the ability to get involved in a project like that, I'd love to talk to you, see if we could uh, make this available to the community on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Sorry I droned on. I do appreciate uh, anyone who made it this far with me. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you like my videos, I wish you would subscribe. Certainly like and comment and share with your friends. It's my pleasure to make these videos. I do it strictly for the fun in my retirement years. I love aviation and I love sharing uh, what I learn with other people. I promise you if you do subscribe, I won't be flooding you with notifications because I only put out videos occasionally when I have something of interest to share. I'm not just putting out weekly videos and trying to build a subscriber base, which I really don't need. I do certainly, though, enjoy hearing from you, and I do appreciate feedback to know that what I'm doing is useful to other people. Also, I'd love to hear how you think those 12 buttons ought to be assigned. Thanks for watching. Hope I'll see you again on one of my future videos.